Hi friends, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. Today on John's Briefs, once again with Tim Forshe, I wanna talk about uh, the badge cam that we had on the channel of uh, a, a perp being set on fire. Yeah. Literally immolated by a taser. Florida man. Oh my Burst gosh. Burst into flame, yeah. And, and one of the craziest videos that I've yeah. really ever seen on the channel, yeah. and I wanna talk about the legal implications of it. To win the fight after the fight, you need help. After a use of force, I trust Firearms Legal Protection to help me win the fight for the rest of my life. From their 24-7 attorney answered hotline to coverage for the use of all legal tools, Firearms Legal Protection has you covered. Get a discount by signing up at the link below. So Tim, uh, when I sent this to you at first, I said the first thing I wanna talk about is should that officer who lit that taser off face criminal charges for doing that? That's a tough call. It really is a tough call. It's hard to say. Was, was what he did negligent? Absolutely. Yeah. Was what he did reckless? Maybe. Was what he did intentional? Clearly not. Yeah. In theory, crimes are for intentional acts, but they can be charged when there's negligence or, or recklessness. recklessness. Yep. Uh, Culpable. Right? Alec Baldwin, in my opinion, should absolutely be being charged for negligent homicide. I don't think he intended to kill anybody. Yep. And I, it might even be a stretch to say he was reckless, but he was clearly negligent. Yep. So you can be prosecuted for negligence. Was this negligent? Yeah. Um, when I watched this video, the first thing I thought was, you know, people t are screaming now about defunding the police. Let's defund the police. Let's defund the police. You know the, how, how you solve these problems is spend less money on training. Right. That's really the solution. This guy should have been in training. You know, and, I, and I've gone through uh, taser training twice. Yeah. And there's very, very little information that's taught to police officers, at least in my experience, about ignition hazards. Um, it's not only, I, I mean, in theory, I, I believe there was a case where a guy had, uh, had poured a bottle of perfume or something. Had it on the channel, had a, a yeah. hand sanitizer all over. Yeah. And that got lit him on fire. Ignited. Yeah. So, but, and there's very little taught about that. So your taser is a, is a, is an effective tool sometimes, but so is a monkey wrench, but you don't use it for right. all problems. You know I mean? You got to. You and, gotta and, sort of think this through a little bit. So that's the first thing I think is training was a problem here. It clearly it was. Yeah, and, yeah. and it surprised me because in the, so I'm a, a taser certified civilian trainer mm -hmm. at the Pulse. And, and one of the first things that we're taught is you don't tase anybody who is standing in liquid, doused with liquid, yeah. or uh, has any flammables right. near them because it's an electrical charge. Yeah. This is how we start Very fires. Very high electrical charge. Yeah, yeah this right. is how we start fires. We right. have, you know, again, go back to the Boy Scout days, right? We right. have spark. Uh, so, so we have an ignition source, we have fuel, we have oxygen. If yeah. you have those three, guess what? You got fire. Apollo one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, and and in this case, you know, we heard them say, "Turn the gas off," because the the gas cap of the bike was open because uh -huh. he was gassing the bike up. And so then they dumped that. There's gas all over the place. You could see it on the ground. And somebody says that, "Hey, there's gas all over here." And then. I think it sounded to me like the officer who actually said that is the one who then gets his taser yeah. and is going to either drive stun with it or yeah. whatever and just obviously yep. and he gets burned doing I, that. I assume he did dry stun, right? Because if he if he'd ejected the, the, the talons, we'd have probably heard the pop of the nitrogen cap. Right. So we, I'm assuming so, he did stun, yeah. But, but that's nothing but spark then. Yeah, no, that's it's just nothing spark. but spark. It's even worse as an ignition source. Yeah. So let's talk about that idea though that, so okay, was he wrong? Yeah, clearly, clearly, clearly wrong. wrong. Yeah. Was that negligent well then we have to ask the question of would a reasonable person know should he know mm -hmm. and and then we ask was he trained to that state well that's just it it's not a reasonable person it's a reasonably well-trained police officer right right a reasonably so well -trained. if he let's say he wasn't trained if he wasn't trained on the proper way to use tasers around hazardous materials like that then was he negligent? At that point, he's using the regular knowledge of a normal person right. in, in a very stressful situation. And that would then put the, the responsibility onto the department That's and therefore onto the people. This is a case where, um, you know, well, in Arizona, there's, we have statutes to say that you cannot benefit financially through a civil suit for your actions during the commission of a felony. Of, yeah. Of a so felony. that might preclude a civil suit in Arizona in this case. I've actually had cases I hadn't turned down for similar reasons. Was he committing a felony? I guess well, it could be felony endangerment. I, I, I think that there was definitely, you could you could pretty easily cast the light on it, this thing, that the way they were driving those motorcycles was felonious. Yeah, yes. okay. So, so that might be an issue. But let's say that's not an issue here. Uh, this is a really good civil suit because what you're gonna do is you're gonna get discovery of the training materials and the, and the training officers, and you're gonna find out just what training they gave. And if they didn't adequately train him about non-deployment of tasers in hazardous environments like that, 
then that is definitely a problem with their training. And now you've got a guy with, I think you said 75% second and third degree burns. Yeah. Second degree burns don't bother me too much. Those heal pretty good. But third degree burns, you know, lifetime well, changing, you know, scars, constriction and, and, and complexion and uh, yeah. all the problems with that. So, I mean, that could be burn cases, as any plaintiff's attorney will tell you, are the biggest cases out there. Yeah. So, well, you know, and, and let's say they did train him right. Now we have an agent of the state who is acting uh, against his training. Correct. So he's still got the same tort here. Well, you, you, yes, you've still got the same tort because his his actions are on behalf of the in, of the department while he's in, the, in mm -hmm. conducting his job. Uh, but at that point, if, if you prove he was adequately trained, now I think you go back to perhaps this was some sort of negligence mm -hmm. that's criminal negligence. So, um, yeah, it's just a, just a mess, just a mess. The so, whole thing. so uh, and the other part, when we say, oh, the department is who is responsible, guess the department doesn't stand on its own. That's the people. That's that's you yeah. and me. We, we employ the department, right? We and, pay for the department. And we pay the, the damages, whether right. it's insured or not. We're paying those damages too as taxpayers. And I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. When you deputize a police department and you say, hey, go and enforce these laws we've decided, our legislature has decided mm -hmm. to enact, and our judicial system has decided are, are within the bounds of what we've decided, then I wouldn't go do that without the people standing behind me right. to the, the, listen, that if I act within the, the what you've told me to do, yeah. you're the ones who are responsible, Correct. not me. I'm down with that, yeah. but recognize that that we're the ones who stand behind it. Mm -hmm. So to me, I agree with you, Tim, that, that listen, it's not about, well, we need to have less training for our police department. In fact, we need to have more. Well, not only training, but hiring procedures. I mean, you know, if we're cutting corners, I know right now I believe the city of Phoenix is down. I've, I've heard like 700 officers. 700 and more. Everybody's working overtime and everybody's exhausted and they're not getting adequate training. Guys, that is not how we solve problems with policing problems. You know, right. you need to spend more money, have better hiring procedures, well, better training, not less. And stuff like this, I think, makes fewer people want to go become cops. Oh, my gosh. Because not stuff, stuff like everything that's happened in the last four years in this country. Why? I mean, ha who would want their 18-year-old son to go into the police academy at this point? I, so Phoenix just raised their their uh, starting pay for officers into I think around sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I go for five grand a month every time you pull someone over, every call you go to, yep. you end, might end up in prison, you might end up dead. Yep. That doesn't sound like a great. They're going to hang out to dry. Half yeah. the public is spitting on you. I mean, why? It's so all horrible. that to yeah. come back to this particular case, mm -hmm. this was wrong. Yeah. And and of course, uh, this guy was not doing anything that justified immolating him. Well, I think your co-host Mike pointed out too, it's like, I, I, I see this a lot on, on, on badge cams and I see it, um, you know, when I get the form fives and I read it, it's like, did you overreact? Right. You know, did you overreact? It's like the classic case with, uh, in Waco, Texas with the Branch Davidians. Mm. Did you really need to storm the compound? Right. Couldn't, that you have waited, now? couldn't you have waited until he went to the post office tomorrow morning and arrested him there on the ground with no problem and no risk to anybody? Wouldn't yeah. that have been smarter? But you had to be grandiose about it. And a lot of police officers, they do. They, you will respect my authority. It sounds like South Park, you know? Yeah, contempt and, of cop. It, yeah, contempt of cop. And it's like, okay, I get it. This guy's a little scofflaw. This guy needs his mom and dad to spank him really, really hard, and he should never have a motorbike ever again. But, but at that point, do you really need eight cops to just, just bum rush the guy and knock his bike over and put him on the ground in a pool of spilled gasoline? You know, I don't want him to get on the bike and take off. Okay, so use the cruisers to block him in, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then, but, but calm down a little bit. And that's, that would be what I would have recommended too, is you came on like gangbusters a little bit here, guys. A little heavy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and some guys do. And we also talk about sometimes a little bit of violence early prevents a lot of violence later. Yeah. But here we ended up at as extreme a level of violence. But you can't get much more extreme than this. He literally wouldn't be worse injured if you'd shot him. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a big deal. Big thing out of this one, a difference between wrong, negligent, reckless, and criminal. Right. Those are different things. Mm -hmm. So we got we to gotta keep those in mind, not only for cops, but for private citizens too. Yeah. Tim, appreciate it. I appreciate it, bud. Thanks, always.